Good morning everyone. Um, I've had some questions um, about making the tattered lace decoupage flowers look as realistic and dimensional as possible. So what I thought I'd do today is a very quick video using a simple decoupage flower so you get the idea on how to put them together um, but to make them as realistic as I can for you so you can see how I do it and then you can transfer that to yours. Now you can actually spend hours and hours on these flowers if you wanted to but um, this should only take you a couple of minutes per flower so it's not too in depth. Now first of all I've got um, my dies here so for those of you who are really beginning with tattered lace flowers what we usually have with the flowers is one piece of metal will be your main flower that will be the base that you layer everything up onto and that's usually the biggest ones so that's these top ones here and then you'll usually have one or two other pieces of metal that are numerous die cuts within the one piece and these are all your decoupage pieces so decoupage is when you're layering um, pieces on top of the, each other and they're getting usually smaller and smaller and smaller as you get up towards the top so that's giving you that shaped look so um, this flower in particular the chrysanthemum that's from the recent pressed rose collection if I just take my tape off there we've got a little bee in the corner I'm not sure how well you can see that there's a little bee etched onto the die there now that won't cut into your flower at all that's on the outside of the cut line but that's your base there so this is flower letter B. and then on these pieces let's also take these tapes off we've got on here b1 there and then over on this one we've got b2 now these can get really quite complicated these bits if i bring in um, a die that is back let me just find it that is back from a long time ago with all the decoupage pieces here we go. This is a count from the Countess collection, which is one of the first decoupage pieces we did. You see all of these other decoupage pieces, again on one piece of metal, and you've got all the letters and numbers on there. So you really can have something quite simple as the chrysanthemum here with a couple of layers, or something with lots and lots and lots of layers. Usually lots and lots of layers will be when it's more of a cluster rather than just a single flower. Okay, so they do vary. So what I've done is I've cut out my flower, so I've used the charisma and laid, la lined them up, cut them out already. Now I've cut them from two different um, different types of paper here, so you can see the difference as well. Um, but what I tend to do when I'm at home and I've got the time is cut more than one layer of each. So I'll cut two or even three sometimes if I want a really voluptuous flower. I'm not, I'm not keen on the word voluptuous, so I won't use it too often. I'm not sure why. So here I've actually used these, these ones here with the deep colour. This is the um, pro paper that was launched with Stephanie's collection, signature collection, a couple of months ago. This doesn't come into stock, or rather when it comes into stock it goes out very quickly. So if you see it, I would grab it on Create and Craft straight away. But you can see the depth of the colour that you've got there. And then this is just one that I printed on general copy paper paper so you can see the difference so the colors have bled a little bit more they're much more faint so that's the two differences so that is why it's well worth you getting an, a more more suitable paper like the um, pro paper otherwise something like a super smooth is perfect because the ink sits on top like this rather than soaking in and bleeding together but I want to show you the difference and also I've got two layers here from each one so I can layer them up and show you lots um, lots of volume in there so some of the basic tools I use is a pokey tool. So this is just for curling some petals over and also for holding and positioning where I need. I use um, the big Fleur's ball tool. So this is really a heavy ball tool. And this one is probably still available, but it often comes with a mat as well. So this is a mat. This is actually a parchment mat, but essentially what it is is a foam mat that I can press into and get some shape into my flowers. If you don't have a foam mat at the moment, something like a mouse mat, would work just as well. Um, I have another tool. Now, this is actually a parching tool. Um, this is like a bit like a little scoop. There's probably a proper name for it. But sometimes I use that if I've got little detail to get into because you see it's much more accurate than the big ball tool. And then lastly, you can use foam pads, but by by any means, I would always go with the glue gel if you've got it and if you can, because it does give a more professional finish. You won't see any white squares in between your flower layers. Um, actually, lastly, one thing as well is glossy accents, and I'll show you why I use those at the end. Okay, so let's get started. Now, if I have got variation of 
uh, finishes on my paper, what I'd always do is make sure that the, the brighter, more in-depth colour would be top layers. So what I'm going to do is start with the larger layer, which is where we always start, and build up as I go to the smaller ones, making sure that of each layer, these ones that are more in-depth in colour are the top ones. So this is going to be my very base layer. Now, first of all, if I pop these just to the side a bit, I'm going to bring this onto my mat. Now, I'm going to look first. If you can see here, in flowers, very often we have little petals and they have cut lines in them. So don't, don't forget about those. Once you finish shaping, just go in with your pokey tool and lift those up, which we'll do in a little while. Now, you don't have to be too precise if you've got layers going over the top. So when I look at this, I've actually got... This one's going to be going over the top here. Let me see, where are you going? Over there. So this middle section isn't going to be seen at all. And then exactly the same again when the smaller layer comes over. Again, the middle's not going to be seen. So I only need to lift up elements on that very top layer. So that's going to save you a bit of time. So for each one, what I do is I turn it over and I work in small circles with my ball tool. I'm not putting a great deal of pressure on. But I'm just pressing down enough so you can see that paper flex. Now, don't worry about any creaking and cracking you get here, okay, because that's just where the cut lines are. I'm working in small circles, and you can see my, my flower is actually naturally moving around as I go. So I'm only working with the middle at the moment, because what I want to achieve is that domed shape, and it doesn't have to be perfect, but I've just got it so it's not flat anymore. So if I compare that to the other one that is flat... So you can see the difference. We've got some shape to it there. So we don't need a lot on the first one because this has still got to lay down onto your paper or your card. So if you do that with the centre, just in the middle there, and then what you can do if you want to is bring these petals upwards a little bit as well. Okay, all the way round. So there, there's my first one. I'm going to do exactly the same now with the second layer and you, again you don't need to spend a lot of time so you can go around in circles and then go from the middle outwards as well almost in like a star pattern anything to l be lifting these edges up and pressing the middle down okay there we go now the back often looks a little bit messy when you do that but don't worry you're just compacting the layers so you can see here on the edge here i've actually got a petal that's gone inwards so I'm just going to push that back outwards and then pull everything out as I did with the first layer. Just being careful not to depress what I've just shaped there. So, uh, so this is quite in-depth, this one. You can do as much or as little of this as you like. And it really will depend as well on how much time you've got and how many flowers you're doing. So what I'm going to do is layer these two together. So I use the glue gel, the pin flare glue gel. I always use a syringe as well, but if you don't have the syringe at the moment, it's not the end of the world. You can use it straight from the tube. You will just get a lot more come out at any time. So this is more accurate. So I'm going to put this only in the center. I'm going to do it as one big blob of glue there. So hopefully you can see that there. Just one big blob in the middle, okay? The reason being, what we want to do is we want to raise up. Now, I'm just looking at positioning this exactly over and then twisting it very slightly. So if we look at the this edge here, so these two petals that are sticking out here, let me lift it up for you. So these spiky ones here, pointed ones, they should be laying over each other perfectly. Actually, oh, sorry, like, like so. But what I'm going to do is twist it ever so slightly probably only a few millimetre there, so they're not laying perfectly over. Now what's happened with that shaping is the glue gel in there is lifted, is keeping the middle lifted up, and where I used my pokey tool to roll out the edges, they're now coming outwards. So I don't want to move this too much because glue gel does take a couple of hours to fully set. But that's my flower. So you're not pressing, all you're doing is making sure that the glue has just grabbed the other layer now when you do look at this on a card or another project if you do manage to look in between the layers you won't see the glue very easily at all because it's now it's clear so and it will dry like that so I'm just going to pop that to the side a second I'm going to do exactly the same with these other ones so 
just rolling in the middle. So I'm just going to speed the video up for you while I do this because you've seen what I've done and I'm exactly the same, just rolling in the centres where the centre of the flower is. Not necessarily the centre of the die cut, but where the centre of the flower is. That's where the most raised bit will be. So on this one, the bud is at the top here. So I'm rolling there and then these areas I'll lift up. So I'll just speed through this for you and I'll come back to you when we're gluing together again. So now I'm using my, I've been using my big ball tool. I'm just going to come in with the smaller one because this one is our very top layer. I want to be very gentle with it. I don't want to crease it or break the paper too much. And I really want uh, a lot of depth on this one. So I've come in with my smaller one. If you have a smaller embossing ball tool, that would work just as well. So just by gently stroking the paper in, in the center there, I've really managed to shape that one quite a lot. And I'm going to do the same Again, so what I'm going to do is pinch this between my thumb and my finger. So what that's doing here is keeping that shape that I've created and just hold the edges down where these petals are and bend these the other way from the front. So just pressing along the cut lines there to bend those flowers upwards there. So then I've got, hopefully you can see that, it's domed one way and then it's domed the other way. And if I show you that from the side you can see what I've done there so that is my top layer and what I can also do because we'll have color and un showing underneath we can actually lift some of these petals as well now usually what I would suggest is wait until your glue has dried before you worry about this because you don't want to risk squashing all that lovely shaping you've just done but you can see there's areas on there you can just lift up the tiny elements and that will add even more dimension so I'm now just gluing these together so bringing in my first one like I say, that still won't be dry, so just be gentle with it and a big blob of glue in the middle for each and every one and just roughly line up. Now, it's a good idea to have a look at your flower and just find one point that stands out to you on each layer so you can really line them up. So for me, it's actually this curved petal here at the bottom. That's the one that stands out on each layer so you can clearly see it. See it. So I line that up, like I say, and then rather than putting that down exactly, I just twist it slightly one way or another doesn't matter whether you go left to the left or to the right and that gives you lots of volume because we're layering two up at a time you don't want these directly on top of each other or they will look like a copy you want it to look like a completely completely individual layer so there's the glue in the middle no glue on the outside whatsoever so twist that slightly there we go and then don't forget you're using your um, your really your best layers for your top ones any layers underneath where the color's not quite as good as you want. Maybe you've die cut and you've die cut slightly at um, an angle, so you've got um, not necessarily the best lined up charisma. Use those as your lower layers and you won't see them. You'll still just get the volume that you want. And this is my last one. So again, the glue in the middle. You don't need any glue to hold up the rest of the petals. So just twist that very slightly. So now what you can do, always put your lid back on your syringe once you've finished with it, is just press, start pressing this down so that you can't see too much at the edge, at the edges. So if I lift this up now, see we've got a lot of dimension in there and where you've got any gaps, like between these two layers, I'm just going to squish that a little bit and just work your way around. But you can see there by looking, all you can see is the white underneath of the flowers. Now I've left that for you as an example. What I like to do is before I put everything together, once it's die cut, just take some ink and go around your die cuts with a similar colour. This one obviously be a pink. So you can pick up just some colour on the edges there. So when you do look at it, you don't have the white showing. But you can see there, that's that flower all built up. It looks absolutely beautiful and so realistic. Now lastly, just to finish this off, what I love to do is bring in my glossy accents and very carefully on just a few of the little tips of the flowers is put tiny, tiny little like dew drops. So as if this has just been out in the rain. They can be larger ones or smaller ones. Just really have a blob of glue on the end of your nozzle and rather than squeezing it anymore, just gently touch that. It's going to be a bigger one. There we go. Touch that onto the petals and sometimes they'll be bigger, sometimes they'll be smaller. 
and then what these will do is they will shine um, once they're dry they'll be clear they'll shine in the light as you move your card around and they will look like little dew drops on your flower as well they look very um they look a little bit um opaque at the moment so you've got the whiteness to them but they will dry clear so that's how i make my flower so it's quite simple steps same really for every flower some flowers will look better if they're curved over as i've done them some flowers will actually look better if you um, work on the front of them so when you're using your ball tool if you press into the front so the colors facing upwards so they'll actually curve outwards so um, have a play with them and actually for each flower if you do them both ways you'll see two very different looks and that will give you even more versatility with them so I hope this has helped some of you any questions if you pop it down in the comments and I'll try to answer them as much as possible okay thank you for watching